So welcome to the night hacking interviews at Ordev. So I'm joined with Katie. Yes. And we are going to chat a bit about actor frameworks. Cool. So welcome to night hacking. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing at the Ordev conference this week? Sure. So um, uh, my background is in distributed systems engineering, and I've been building, I've been building um, uh, distributed systems and services that power the entertainment industry essentially for the last six years. And so that's Gears of War two, um, Gears of War three, Halo four, and then most recently I was working on the the next generation of the HBO Go platform that does streaming services for HBO Go. Um, and so I'm at, our, or I'm at our or dev this year to talk a lot about Orleans, which is a, an actor framework and runtime that was built by Microsoft Research uh, that we use to build the Halo 4 services on top of. And so um, when I was at Halo, uh, we worked with that MSR team to productionize this framework that they had built and like built toy applications on top of. But then we took it and we put it into production uh, to power the Halo 4 services, which is like millions of concurrent users and terabytes of data and doing real time sort of analytics with it. OK, so backing up a little bit. Um, for folks who have not used an actor framework yet, sure. What is it, and why would you want to? What sort of um, applications is it best suited for? Sure. So, um, so the actor model is a model for thinking and programming and solving uh, concurrent computation problems. And it actually came out of a paper that was written in 1973 by Hewitt, Bishop, and Steiger to solve uh, artificial intelligent computation problems. But it's been repurposed since then to solve distributed systems computing problems. And so and the, apparently it's very good for gaming. Uh, it works really <laughs> well for certain, because of the way we partition our data and, and do things, it, it has translated incredibly well into gaming. Um, but the, the core idea of it is you have these units of computation or these entities in your system called actors, and they encapsulate some data. Uh, so they have their own state, and then they have the ability to operate on that state. And then they can talk and communicate with each other by passing asynchronous messages. Um, and so when you do that, you no longer, you've eliminated a lot of the shared state in your system. So concurrent computation becomes a little bit easier because you're not sharing as much state. You're also passing asynchronous messages. So um, thread control is a little easier to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a lot of uh, frameworks out there. Or this has been around for a while, right? So Erlang yeah, uses yeah. the actor model. ACA uses the actor model. Um, ACA.net is a port, obviously, of ACA. And, then, and now we have Orleans, which uses the actor model. Cool, and it sounds like it's um, especially suited for things where you need a lot of scalability, mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of distribute the requests. Yeah, so the, the the best way to think about when you might want to use an actor model is you have a traditional architecture that we talk about a lot with services where you have like a stateless front end and a stateless middle tier and then your data layer, uh, or your data storage, right? And so you pass these requests through and everything's stateless so it can scale out linearly and that's super fantastic. Uh, the problem there is sometimes when you want this property of data locality where you want a lot of the data to sort of be like an in-memory cache on a server and you want to have more of a stateful middle tier, the actor model becomes incredibly useful because um, you pass messages from your stateless front end to a stateful middle tier that knows how to route your message to the box that particularly has the data on it that you care about and then it can answer that request cool. and it sort of can cache data locally. Yeah. So is there anything in particular about the Orleans framework which um, stands out as far as um, how you use it? Yeah. So the, or the Orleans framework and its biggest sort of contribution to this actor space and what is talked about a lot in the paper that was published in March is this concept of virtual actors. Uh, so basically, actors in Orleans are these logical thought entities. They can't explicitly be created or destroyed. So in a lot of other languages, like Akka and Erlang, you have to go and say, uh, you have to manage the life cycle of your actor. Orleans, the runtime itself, when you're programming, you just pass a message to the actor. And if it happens to exist on a machine, Orleans will route it to that machine to service the request. Um, but if it doesn't, Orleans will bring that actor up on some machine somewhere for you, and then we'll pass the message to it. And as a developer, this code looks exactly the same, and you haven't had to write any code. Um, and so this concept of virtual actors, and then coupled with the concept of location transparency, which is the actors are not deterministically placed on a machine. Um, 
So it's like when I, I call you or send you a message on, on my cell phone, uh, like a text message, it, I don't know where you are. You might be in Sweden or you might be like in the States and the cell service just routes it for me. I just know your phone number. This is the same thing. You just know like this is this actor's type and ID and I send it a message and Orleans will figure out which machine it's on and, and, and route that message for you. Yeah, so it sounds like it probably simplifies the programming model for doing actors Yeah, the, so, the, so the programming model is really great because uh, so Orleans is uh, uh, .NET, right? So C Sharp, F Sharp, CLR. And you basically can get a bunch of developers who know how to write really great uh, .NET code, and they can just focus on their application, and then they can write code that will linearly scale out for you. And, not, and then the Orleans framework takes care of a lot of the distributed systems problems, like fault tolerance and reliability. Cool. So how, how large have the systems been where you've been applying actor frameworks? Yeah, so we, we don't have public numbers that I can share, but we do. <laughs> we were on hundreds of cores um, for Halo. Uh, some of the numbers I can share are we had 11.6 million unique users come through and play on our system. Wow. Um, we had on day one. Uh, the other interesting fun thing about games is you have these crazy uh, spikes at launch. So you essentially go from zero to like a million unique users on day one, and your system just has to take it, right? And then like you'll have like five million unique users uh, within the first week, uh, and then it sort of tapers off, right? But uh, and then we had something like 1.5 billion games of Halo played, so we were processing tons of data and had tons of actors and and not having to manage that life so, cycle. So I assume easy. this didn't just come naturally. You had to do some load testing or um, yeah. try to simulate that explosive growth even before the launch. Yeah, so we did a lot of due diligence, right? It's not, we did rewrite the whole Halo set of services and deploy at Halo 4 launch, but we also did a sort of a test project where we took, uh, because we were building in Azure and we were building using this new Orleans framework where we replaced a system for one of the prior Halo games. So it was the present system, which is sort of like a heartbeat service. It, you just tell us what you're doing every 30 seconds and we make that data available. Uh, and we replaced it in the year before we went to prod with Halo 4. And so we were able to validate all of this new technology that we were using and see real live prod data. Uh, and so that helped us, like we found a memory leak. Uh, so right, like uh, during the holidays of 2011, I was VIP swapping our service every like, ups, uh, basically refreshing the service every six to eight hours so that it wouldn't go down uh, yeah, because so we had a memory leak. But then work we were, around. Yeah. So that, <laughs> so yeah, work around. But then uh, you know that was good to find early on, and then we were able to fix that before we went live. We also did a lot of stress testing leading up and perf testing leading up to the launch, and so we found. Um, Issues with our garbage collector. We had some garbage collector stalls that we went and optimized out, things like that. Yeah, so any um, advice or lessons learned on building large distributed systems, which um, your average developer can take away and apply? Yeah, I mean, so there's a ton. One is that uh, you need a really great logging and metrics and alerting system. Um, when you have hundreds of cores in production, you're not going to be able to SSH into a box. Uh, so you really need metrics to help you and, and distributed tracing to help you figure out what's going on. So uh, invest in that. Um, and then one of the other big takeaways was like really just develop your code and plan that things are going to fail. So every time you're writing a piece of code, like what if it failed here? Like what if it failed here? Like make sure that all of the failure cases are known and thought of early on. Cool. No, that sounds like really good advice. So um, anything else you want to highlight? for folks here at Ordev who are watching online on the live stream? Um, yeah, so I think Orleans is super cool because it goes and helps us solve and build distributed systems that just sort of scale easily for us. Uh, I get really excited about it because I think it's a great direction for the distributed systems community to be building tools and frameworks that help developers uh, not have to like you know understand super complex distributed systems problems and just focus on their application and build code to scale. So there's other some other frameworks and stuff like that that are coming out that are really exciting just to see, and so it's interesting from that perspective. Cool. All right. So thanks very much for taking time into your busy schedule, Katie, to talk a little bit about distributed systems. Awesome. Um, we're doing interviews here at the Ordev conference all this week, so we have more interviews this afternoon. Um, Dan North is coming up as well as some other folks, and then tomorrow as well, um, and then more interviews at DevOps next week. Awesome. Thanks for having me. So thanks very much. Thanks.